Hi, welcome back to Giving It with Sohil. In this tutorial, we are going to be exploring the use of frame emotion to create your own animated blog. In the first part of this series, you're going to see how to make a smooth scrolling carousel. This carousel you see on your screen, we are going to be taking it and transform it to a smooth scrolling one using frame emotion. And in the second part of the video, well, I'm going to show you how to do page transitions. So my name is Sohim and I'm excited. Let's get started. So this carousel you see on your screen right here is the standard carousel that you would get if any element, if any DOM element you have on your screen overflows the viewport. If you see the scroll bar, pretty standard. Scroll and this is what you get. It, it's not smooth per se because it just jumps to the final location, the final destination of the scroll bar. So it's not smooth. So if you want to implement a smoothing behavior, well, browsers don't directly allow you to control the scroll bar. Either you implement the scrolling on your own or you just leave it to CSS for smooth scrolling. So we are going to be kind of hacking the scroll mechanism to implement our own smooth scrolling. Yes, we are also going to be using frame emotion. If you do not know what frame emotion is, it is a fantastic React library of animating DOM elements. It's very performant and its APIs are quite simple and yet very powerful. So before you start this tutorial, I suggest you go and maybe read a few lines of documentation of frame emotion. Just search for frame emotion and you're gonna come on their documentation. So all these animations you see on your screen are all achievable with frame emotion. You see tons. Check this out. For example, here are four cards. I click on one and this card just pops in front of it. If you had to code this manually with just your own custom JavaScript and CSS, it would have taken quite a lot of testing, quite a lot of brainstorming to find the most, uh, you know, the most optimized way of achieving this. But with frame emotion, look at here. All you need to write is just this small piece of code to achieve this. Isn't it awesome? Frame, frame Emotion is one of the best DOM animation libraries and it works with React. So let's get into it. I would recommend you go through just a bit through the API, at least uh, the introduction, uh, the animation, the transition. And yeah, that's what you would need. And I think some motion value as well. These are the, some, some of the concepts that we are going to be using for this tutorial. So once you've gone through that, or just at least, you know, develop the intuition for what frame emotion is, just a bit of it. And once you are done, please continue with this video. So you don't have to start working on this project from the grounds up, you know, gathering all these pictures and uh, writing all the CSS. And I already went ahead and uh, scaffolded this project. So you can just clone my repository from here. The link will be in the description for this project. Just, or if you want to just manually type it out, write github.com slash captain wolf slash, what did I name it? I uh, just blog frame of motion. Yeah, this is the URL. It will also be in the description. Like I said, by the time you reach this repository, you will see there are multiple branches right now. Here are only three. What you need to do is clone the repository, switch over to one carousel start branch and this is exactly where I'm going to be taking this tutorial from. So we are going to going to start from one carousel start here. And if you switch over to this branch, you will come here. You will see there are there is no smooth scrolling. All you will get is a carousel. You hover the mouse over it and you're going to see it scales up and it uh, returns to its original saturation from a grayscale effect. And that is all that I have done here. If we look at the code, I am on the one carousel start branch and this is uh, these three files would be where you need to focus on the entire uh, for this tutorial at least everything else you don't need to touch it I just already went ahead and scaffolded it I'm using VJS and um, yeah there's TypeScript for type support you, you're gonna see why it's important I mean I use TypeScript a lot uh, you, you're free to use JavaScript if you want uh, but I use TypeScript, so we're going to be using that. Also for styling, we are going to be using SAS because it makes things easier. But you can also use CSS. Uh, I mean, the main part of this tutorial is to not focus on the CSS and the components of stuff. The, the main focus of this tutorial is to be 
learning the use of frame of motion and, and using it to implementing the smooth scrolling. So uh, the app component here, I'm just going to give you a very quick uh, rundown on what we are going to do. The app component here has uh, some routes defined. Uh, one of the routes is home page uh, that is rendered at the root of our uh, build directory. So you're going to see the home page directory, the home page directory. This is the home page directory. You're going to see just a small title, just a few words. And this is the component that we will be focusing on the post carousel that we are going to be adding uh, smooth scrolling on. So this is the post carousel. It's a simple, a very simple grid, a one dimensional uh, row wise grid where every element is arranged in columns. Uh, so this is the container for that. And inside of that, we are rendering multiple uh, posts. Each of these posts just show a background image which scales up. If you hover over it and you see some text on it, the text is its title and its author. Uh, this information comes out from the use posts hook. You don't have to be concerned with it. I originally wrote this tutorial to fetch some data from this from some dummy API server and then work with it. But then I figured out it was way too complicated with the project and it was not the aim of that. So just think of, of use posts as a hook that returns you data. That's it. And yeah, so we have the data, which is actually coming from this data.json file. Uh, we have a couple of these posts right here, along with some images as well. These images are also in the repository, by the way. So if you go to the public folder images, you are going to see these pictures. So they are there. All of these is just dummy data. So yeah, that's my phone. Hmm. I'm going to, yeah, I should have put it on silent. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is where the data comes from and it's, it gets rendered here. Now let's start with our tutorial. But before that, let's develop an intuition for scrolling. What is scrolling? So I'm going to be using GIMP. If you are new to my channel, you should know that I use GIMP extensively for uh, teaching you how to develop an intuition for whatever concept I'm about to teach. Uh, okay, so what is scrolling? It's very, uh, you know, scrolling didn't always exist. It didn't, I mean, it wasn't there when screens were invented, basically. It wasn't there. The concept of scrolling didn't exist. Whatever you saw was made to fit in inside the viewport, and that was it. When scrolling was invented, it was kind of a, rev a revolutionary concept. Think about it. Say you have a very big document right here, a very long page. Imagine this to be thousands of lines long. But at a time, let's say there is a window that you can uh, slide along. Say I'm going to change the color and say there is a window that is only what? I didn't change the color. What? That is so strange. Why does the color not change? Why can I not choose purple? Weird bug, but yeah. So say my window is only this big. I cannot see anything that is outside of this window. Imagine this window to be uh, something that creates a hole and allows us to peer through it. So uh, I can't see what's here. I can't see what's here, but I can see what's here. And the only way for me to know what's below this document, what's beneath what I'm seeing is to shift this window, is to drag this window down that would say, uh, bring this window say here, and then I can see what's written here. So that is the entire idea of scrolling, that when something extends its parent container, in this case, the parent container is our screen. If it extends, scrolling is enabled there allows it allows us to like see more of the parent container even if it exceeds the screen by dragging this viewing window say downwards rightwards leftwards whatever now here is what you need to develop an intuition for see this if you drag this box this view box downwards 
what happens is that you see more of the element, right? More of the parent container. Can't we achieve the same if, say, we fix this view box and instead drag this underlying document upwards? It's the same thing, isn't it? Much like uh, the Earth goes around the sun, right? So, but for us people on Earth, it looks as if the sun is going round. And that happens because the relative motion between two bodies are opposite, right? Their directions are opposite. They look like they are opposite from one another. So, uh, say, now, here is what you need to develop the intuition for. Take this violet colored box, this view box here, to be your monitor. So, if you are scrolling down on your web page, say, for, a, for an example, what's, what your browser is doing is actually shifting the underlying document up. For a scroll down, the document goes up. For a scroll up, the document goes down, thus simulating just scrolling, right? Thus making it seem as if your monitor is the one that is going downwards. I mean, that is the act of scrolling, right? So your browser kind of simulates scrolling by not uh, actually moving this view box. It's physically impossible. But by moving this underlying container that, that contains the content that you need to see. And that is the essence of what scrolling is and precisely what we will be doing in our tutorial. So, what we are going to be doing is step step number one. How are we going to uh, enable smooth scrolling? Well, for that, first, we need to be taking off the scroll bar from here because we cannot allow a browser scroll bar to control this because there is no way we can control that. So, we need to take the control away from the scroll bar. So, how do we do that? Well, it's very simple with CSS. You just set the overflow X to hidden. That's done. But then how do we implement our own scroll bar? Well, think about this. What if I took a single parent container, like so, inside it, create another container. These are of the same sizes, but I'm intentionally leaving a gap between them, so it becomes easy for you to understand. But these are all the same sizes. So uh, I create an inner container and then inside the inner container, uh, messed it up. So this is long, like really long. And why is it long? Well, that is because there are many pictures that would fit column wise inside this. Remember that violet colored box from the previous illustration? Just go rewind and see that if you don't remember that viewing window that I'm referring to. Uh, this is the viewing window, see this. So. If the violet colored window is now to be kept fixed and if I scroll to the right then we need to shift the underlying uh, element to the left hand side to simulate scrolling is it not so if we are to scroll to the right we have to drag this green colored carousel the actual carousel to the left and that would be our scrolling conversely if we want to scroll to the left hand side, we are going to be dragging the underlying uh, green color disk carousel to the right hand side, the opposite. And that is exactly what we are going to be implementing right now. So let's get started. That's enough of a theory. A very long discussion on that. But yeah. So hmm. let's fix our goals first, by the way. So that is one of the goals we have to implement, right? See, I'm dragging this scroll bar to the right. You see that the carousel is moving to the left. See this? Anyway, so what are we going to implement? We're going to be implementing this. Also, what we are going to be implementing is the native behavior of scroll bar on mobile screens. What happens is that if you drag this behavior, you see, it's kind of smooth, kind of not smooth, but we are going to be keeping the same behavior. So we also have to simulate this dragging behavior for mobile screens. We have to be simulating the slider for the white screens. And third, we have to simulate. So if you press shift on your keyboard and just uh, rotate the mouse wheel, you will see that you can also scroll along horizontally. That is the accessibility portion of a slider. So we have to implement three things. The mobile view, where you can drag and move the carousel. The desktop view, where you can slide the slider and move the carousel. And where and third, when you press uh, press shift 
and your mouse wheel to move the carousel. So there's going to be three things. So we're going to be starting with the mobile view, probably one of the simplest one and you're going to see why. So this is our carousel container uh, and these are the elements inside of it. Let's create a parent, a single div container for our entire carousel. You're going to see why we need another outer container. I mean, I think you already know why we need an outer container because this green color here, this green color grid here is this. We need an outer container, this violet one, because that will be used as a reference for scrolling, right? This would be uh, what we would attach our scroller to to scroll this. So let's give it a class name. Let's call it carousel. So we have the carousel now. And let's do a few changes. So we have the carousel class. We copy it. Carousel container is here. I'm using SAS, so I'm going to be using nested classes of SAS. If you're using just pure CSS, make sure to uh, convert it to CSS before making any changes to it. So set the carousel class and the carousel class contains the carousel container, which is actually our grid. Hmm. It's a very simple grid, nothing to be concerned about too much. Look at the grid, uh, this carousel container. It's a grid, right? It's a grid, flows in columnar direction. Every column is 27% of the entire width. Uh, we have a margin top that we are now going to be cut, cutting out pasting here because this is on the parent container, right? This margin top refers to the distance between this uh, header and this carousel right here. So now this would go to the carousel, perfect. And overflow X, now what about, do? What about this overflow X? Now, in this diagram, if you see, we cannot be using overflow X on this green element because that would then attach a slider to this. We don't want that, right? I mean, that is the behavior that we have right now. We don't want that. We have to be done away with that. So we have to take away overflow X. Uh, what that will do is that it will render the full width of this uh, container. And the full width means not just your viewport, but rather all the way to the end when the pictures, I mean, all the way to the last post. So we have to ensure that the width of this container is from here all the way to here. That's quite gigantic, but we have to ensure that. For that, take away the overflow X auto. But the moment you do that, what you will see is that uh, your carousel will then extend past the screen. And since you are not handling the scrolling yourself, your browser would then add a scroll bar that would just scroll the entire page. Go ahead and try that and you can see what I mean. So we need to prevent doing that. So what if we set overflow X hidden here? This would ensure that although this will take the full width of the container, we are hiding the overflow of the X. So now if we save that, and this is saved, you will see that, let's go ahead and refresh that, and you will see that we can no longer scroll it. See, I'm pressing shift and uh, rotating my mouse, what do you call that, wheel down? I'm doing a wheel down, but you see that there is no scrolling on this because overflow X has been set to hidden on the parent container. And by parent, I mean this violet colored, uh, this purple colored view box. So we can't scroll anymore. But how would we ensure then that, remember what I said from my earlier, I mean, uh, just, just a few minutes ago, that if we want to scroll to the right, we drag this carousel to the left. So how do we drag it? How do we drag an element? Well, how about this? Say, I want to drag this carousel container, right? So what if we... Now we have selected the element uh, and Let's do away with this. We don't need this. I can show you with just the CSS. I hope you can see this on the right hand side screen. If it's too small, I'm sorry, you're going to have to zoom in. Uh, so go to the carousel container and we're going to be using an inline CSS just for this demonstration. Say transform and if, we, and if we translate it towards the negative x axis, 
Let's see what happens. Translate x and say a negative of a hundred pixels. Isn't that scrolling? See, watch. This is scrolling, right? We are scrolling this. This is we are simulating scrolling because we are dragging that element back and forth to cause the scrolling. So we can use that. But now the question is, what is the maximum that I can scroll to? Well, it starts at zero, so we know where to start from. But how do we know where to end at? What is the maximum that we can stretch it back? Well, doesn't that depend on the number of pictures and the individual dimension of the pictures of these posts elements? So if we can somehow figure out the total width of this also container here, well, that is the amount in pixels that we can stretch it backwards. Simple. So let's implement that first of all. But we decided to start with the mobile view, isn't it? So we are going to be doing just that. Right now, the behavior we want is that if we click here and drag it, meaning on the mobile screen, if we just tap on there and just drag it to the left hand side, we should be scrolling. Right now, it doesn't because there is no native scroll bar. We just remove that. Frame of motion allows us to do that with a very simple API, and we are going to be looking at that. First things first, what frame of motion does is that it exports uh, for every native DOM element that React has. Frame of motion exports uh, its equivalent element that is motion enabled. What I mean by that is this div you're seeing here. Go ahead and type motion.div. This motion has to be imported from frame of motion, by the way. So if you haven't done that, do that. If you are uh, not starting from scratch and using my branch, you don't have to import anything else. It's, it's there already. So motion.div behaves like a div exactly like a div but it has some extra functionalities that are native only to frame of motion that you wouldn't find in standard dom elements we have the carousel here we want to drag it to the left we just saw that we can use some inline css uh, transformation to do that so what we would do is something i mean if we were to do that we'll say uh transform and then go ahead and then say translate x to negative whatever Frame of motion gives us some shorthand properties to uh, do this very easily without typing much. Go ahead and type X. This X represents translate X. It's a shorthand. And now we need a number. How much to drag? But do we have that number? I mean, I just said we need to find out the width of this. So what is the width of this? We can't access it here. So what if we make a reference to this element, this, comp uh, this element right here? And then use that reference to uh, get the range of the scrolling motion. And then use that range to cause the uh, back and forth of the scrolling. What, what I mean by that, uh, you're going to see soon. Wait. Let me just quickly for mobile scrolling. Let's create a ref here. I'm going to call it carousel container ref simple use ref that points to either a div element starts off as null and we need this to be set here now we have a reference to the carousel container now we need the width and once we get that width we need to be setting i think before that i should say uh like I said, motion elements have some additional properties on top of whatever our native React element they build up on. And one of those properties is drag. It's a gesture that uh, frame of motion exports. And so you have this drag property here. You can either set that to uh, true if you want. Uh, setting this to true will enable you to drag it. Yeah, that's right. You just have to pass this prop and that will take care of dragging for you. Isn't that great? So we have drag. You can either pass it true to enable dragging or just pass X to enable dragging along the X axis. So pass X, we don't want to be uh, passing true here because we don't want the dragging to be happening along the Y axis. We just want horizontal scroll. Let's not use inline CSS. Let me show you something cooler than inline CSS that frame of motion allows you to do that will even simplify things. So you have the drag now. 
it will drag along the x axis let's just save it now and let's not do anything is just save it now and let's see what happens refresh and now we can drag it okay see we just added a simple prop and frame of motion does this on its own well that's cool there's one problem it had to start dragging from here meaning if we drag to the right hand side meaning if we scroll to the left we shouldn't be able to scroll because this is where the also starts from but that's not so frame of motion just scrolls i mean it just trend transitions it all the way so how can you stop that we have another prop for the dragging it's called drag constraints what drag constraints allow you to do is to basically mention uh, the boundaries up to which you want to allow dragging to happen now we are using uh, dragging only along the x-axis we don't have to be concerned with the top and bottom they would be zero anyways so we need to be only concerned with the left and the right so let's start with the left if we drag towards the left what is the expected behavior the expected behavior is for us to reach all the way to the end of the cross and if we drag to the right hand side the expected behavior is to, is to stop at the very beginning of the carousel. So let's uh, start with the right. The right is supposed to be zero because, well, if we drag the right hand side towards the right of where it originally starts, we shouldn't be able to drag because that is where we are starting from. So right would be zero. But what about left? Like I said, left would be the entire uh, width of the carousel container. So let's find the width. How do we do that? Very simple. Why do I use effect for that? So that it fires after uh, all the DOM is uh, ready to be shown. And we have the carousel ref here. Let's take that. Make sure it updates whenever the reference updates, if it does and now we can access the client width or better yet uh, let's access the scroll width i think it would be much easier so let's create another state here here also scroll x or let's say scroll what do we call it scroll distance scroll let's just call it browser scroll width and we're going to be making this into a state so set here also scroll with am i making typos no i'm not new state this state is going to be a number initially starting from zero so we have the carousel uh, with state ready now all we need to do is to set the new one so let's create a function for that mm -mm -mm let's let's say set new carousel with you you will soon see why we need a carousel in the in the first part so carousel with is this the right spelling of carousel i'm pretty sure i'm misspelling it carousel carousel no i am correct it seems isn't it yeah my bad <laughs> let's continue with this so new width is a function that is supposed to be doing something. This something is setting the width to be the same as the scroll width of the element that it points to. So uh, I think it's it will say that this can be a zero, right? So let's say this okay with the type what it does is that if it finds that the reference points to an element what it would do is that first create a function that would uh, set the scroll width and then what we need to do is simple listener say mm, now yeah, we don't need this let's set it not on the window let's set it on the current let's say an add, adding an even listener we are going to be listening for the load event to know when the pictures are loaded because if we start measuring the width before the pictures are loaded before they are ready to be shown you will see that this is still zero that's not what we want so we want to be waiting until loading is done for us to proceed further with setting the width 
and we need this. Another problem, what if someone resizes the screen, say someone is on desktop and they just minimize it or maybe, uh, I mean, whatever, let's assume that something caused the, uh, the viewport width to be decreased. Now we want the width to increase in that case, right? So this function should be running again when a resize event occurs. So we need to be listening to the resize event as well. So we will do that here. Even this listener, same way on the resize, cause set new carousel width. Let's rename this function a bit. The snake case isn't proper. Yeah. So now we have this. And then if you don't know what to return from a use effect, well, optionally you can return a callback function that would be called when the component that is this file right here it is supposed to be unmounted this function would be called here and we need to remove these listeners when that's happening so we will do that now i'm lazy i'm just going to copy this i will copy this here and i'll say remove event listener same to here and let's make this let's just put it outside of us and do this mm -hmm. i think i think we don't need this condition right here why do we need this why can't we just keep it simple because if that element doesn't exist in the first place, we're not going to be needing that now, are we? We can just use this to be able, yeah. We have that. This would set the scroll width with the use effect. Tell you what, let's use a custom hook for this. It's getting way too complicated, isn't it? Quite a few uh, amount of hooks. But before creating a custom hook, Let's test out our functionality before putting it inside another file. So we have the drag constraints here. We have the right, but what is left? Well, the left, now we have the left as the carousel scroll width. We copy it from there. We paste it here. And is that it? Uh, the scroll width, like I said, uh, remember guys, by the way, uh, left has to be negative because if you imagine the axis of dragging up or top is positive y, bottom is negative y, right hand side is positive x, left hand side is negative x. So since it's on the left, you need to be adding a negative sign here. And I think we're good to go. Let me do a quick review. We did everything correctly. And looks like we we have the drag constraints here and I think we should be good to go. Let's check it out. Hit save. Refresh. And let's first check if uh, the zero limit was set correctly, meaning if we drag it to the right hand side, it shouldn't ideally move. If we release it, you see it doesn't move. Now you might complain, well, we're seeing, still seeing a movement. Yeah, it bounces back, but we are still seeing a movement. So what about, what about that? We're going to be fixing that in the immediate next step. But let's also test out the other side of the scroll in the left hand side. So let's do that. Hmm. Did it not get set correctly? Let's refresh the page. Did I set that to just the... Ah. It appears I have a problem. Mm -hmm. The scroll width, hmm. the carousel scroll width, huh? Give me a few minutes. Let me debug this. It should have worked. I'm not gonna extend the video without any reason, so I'm just gonna pause it right now. So I think I figured out the problem with this. When we are initially firing the use effect. If this turns out to be null, this is never fired. And since this is never fired, this is set to zero because that is what we set as the fallback here, isn't it? So we're not getting the actual carousel width. Let's fix that. Let's be a little smart about this. Let's say 
this function here. I'm going to copy this. I set a uh, small logger here just so we can log out the value just for our own check. Let's make this a callback so we're not redefining the function over and over again. And uh, is that let's set this here. Now we need to be running the function on two instances one when the window loads to attach the resize event. We don't need to attach and load ourselves because we can handle that ourselves later. Yeah, let's do away with this and add a small even listener that removes this and not just this, but also let's add a reference to. Yeah, I think that's all we need for this and this call, but it, it it's getting messy, I know because. Uh, and this is why we're going to be shifting this to its own custom hook. But let's test it out first. So we have the function that would be called by use effect on resizing. And what about loading? Well, let's do it from here itself. Let's not handle it us by ourselves, but on here. So on load, we're going to be running this function set new carousel width, which would log the width as well as set it. Carousel container ref. Yeah, that does it. And uh, 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 yeah, let's go ahead. Save. And now it works because previously this value would have been zero. I'm pretty sure of it. And let's test it out. So if we drag to the right, works as expected. If we were drag to the left, well, it does. Perfect. 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 How long is it? Okay, and here's a slight problem. See this extra white space? Why is it there? Well, think about it. How much are we drag? I mean, how much are we allowing frame of motion to drag it backwards? The carousel scroll width. What is the carousel scroll width? The entire width of the uh, the container, right? But that's incorrect. We don't want to be scrolling all the way to the end. We need to be not scrolling till here because that is what scroll width is. We need to be scrolling till here this portion right here meaning all the way from the zero from here we need to be scrolling to here this distance so we need to be subtracting from the scroll width that is from this we need to be subtracting the width of the parent container to know exactly where to end the scrolling so let's do that so we will say from the entire width, now we are going to be subtracting the width of the carousel container itself because the carousel container is the one which that we are scrolling. So let's just verify for brevity's sake. Uh, let's take this. The width is 887. So this, this should work. If we take the carousel container rest, dot current dot client width or zero and this should work because we're subtracting the client width of the carousel that is what we expected for us to stop scrolling at here so if we do that now save it restart this works and this should work too and it does step one complete we have enabled scrolling for mobile devices perfect let's turn our attention to the desktop one now so on the desktop you cannot uh, drag and scroll it i mean you could if you disable the pointed events but that's not what we want right we want our po pointing to be enabled right because we need to click on this so what can we do now for introducing an artificial scroll bar below it hmm before the artificial scroll bar let's do the uh, keyboard accessibility feature first i think that's the next easiest one so let's do that and by that i mean if you press down shift and rotate your mouse wheel you should be able to scroll this one so let's do that this is for mobile scrolling do we want to create a custom hook i'm just thinking hmm 
Nah, for this tutorial, let's leave it as this. What I would do uh, is that just create an, an additional hook here. It's uh, got all this functionality, paste it to the custom hook, and then it export out only the variables that we need, which is this one, and this one, and this one. That's all we will need. But let's leave it for now. So we have the mobile scrolling. Let's turn our attention to for keyboard scrolling. So we need a way for us to detect when we are pressing the shift key. We need a way for us to detect when we are moving the mouse. And we know the scrolling can happen only if your mouse is over the cursor, which means we have to detect the hover event as well. So only when these three things are happening together at the same time should we be scrolling. Otherwise, not. So let's do that. So how do we track? Let's create states for that first. So let's create um, carousel hover or should we say just hover? Let's just say hover, set hover to use state. Let's make it boolean, set it initially to false. I'm going to copy this line because we need these. Now we have the hover we need the shift uh, set shift and we also need uh, we have the hover with the shift and the mouse wheel but do we need the mouse wheel hmm now we don't you see why so you, you you need to be detecting when the mouse wheel changes happen when you rotate the mouse wheel on the carousel right there is an event for that it's on wheel, yeah. And now let's create a function. Let's call it handle keyboard scrolling. Let's say a use callback. And we should be running this. This will handle it for us. And we will be getting an event as well this would be on the wheel event on an html div element so we have it here the on wheel event now we have to enable i mean let's first take care of the hover first when we bring our mouse pointer over this we want this to be set to true else false and there are events for that uh, Let's go on mouse enter. Will be a function. The only job of this function is to set the hover to true. There is the on mouse leave because we also have to detect when the hover gets off. This is false. And we have the hover. Now let's come for the shift keys. How do we detect when a shift key is being pressed? Let's use a use effect for that. Let's write a custom function. Uh, handle shift key detect a simple function. Let's define it later, but first let's attach it. So window dot add even listener. Uh, and let's drag the key down event. And we would also need to attach to a key up, right? So let's do that. Uh, instead of this, handle shift key down. And we will also have another called the shift key up. Yeah, let's do that. Let's separate our concerns. And the down one would be this. And let's say key up when we will be lifting our finger off the shift key and we want this function to be running and when it, the time comes for unmounting let's run the opposite of these functions so we have the remove event listener perfect and now let's handle these so we have the event from here right uh, the event comes to us if we look at if we hover our mouse here this event is a keyboard event so let's set the types as well keyboard events 
Now, we have the key DAO, we have the event, but this would detect all our key DAOs, right? Say someone's pressing an alphabet key, someone's pressing an enter, it would detect all of them. We want to filter out for only when shift is pressed. How do we do that? Well, we say, or let's do it smartly. Let's write set shift to, uh, no, let's do something like if E dot key if this equals shift then set shift since it's down should be up uh, true and the exact opposite here if shift key is detected shift should be set to false because we no longer press it. And this is what would be attached to here let's uh, and are we good to go hmm this handles our mobile scrolling this ha handles our keyboard scrolling so we have to hover we have to shift now for the keyboard scrolling so let's put it the hover and shift and we can do something like if hover and shift because these two need to be happening at the same time now let's log out this event this console.e now remember this log should only be happening upon mouse uh, upon uh, scrolling with the mouse wheel only if we are pressing the shift key and hovering our mouse on the browser so, so these two conditions have to be true for you to see this console log right let's test it out we reload and go to console no log yet mouse wheel down no log yet i'm uh, turning my mouse wheel down you can't see it but i am now let's shift and down also doesn't work as expected but once i hover it should work and it still doesn't are oh, weird hmm let's check why so let's this handle keyboard scrolling uh on wheel we have this keyboard scrolling let's just log something is this function not getting invoked at all so we have this function right here so what's wrong hmm we have the events hover and shift must be true hmm okay did we mess this up down for down up for up down meaning true up meaning false okay let's let's do something here console.log hover is hover and console.log shift is shift let's test it out i think one of these is coming as false for whatever the reason let's try reload so hover comes true shift comes false but if you press shift as well shift doesn't get detected so we found our problem the problem is with shift the problem is here so why is that? Hmm. Let's console.log our events here. I'm just debugging, you know, at this stage, all I'm doing is debugging. We have a keyboard event and the key is shift. That is so weird. Hmm. Because the event.key is shift did I misspell it? No, I didn't. What went wrong? E dot key, we have it. If it is shift, we should be setting this shift. Okay, let's very small console log shift on, and let's write here shift off. Enter reload and our shift doesn't work that's weird let's refresh it again well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't why is that well now it does so we have the shift on and if we release it we have shift off so we should be having the shift value as well but 
if we do a console that log of shift did we mess this up somewhere let's do a reload shift on off on off shift is false but if i press shift and what i made no change now it works i got no idea why but it does remove the log so did i not reload it what is my shift key problematic i don't know let's continue let's not waste any time more time further we have the shift key uh, that's running here let's try it once again reload the page shift and scroll now it does okay so now let's look at the event what we are getting out of this how do we know if it's a mouse wheel down or a mouse wheel up how do we know that well look at this delta y value over here if I scroll down, this value is positive, a positive 66.25, but ignore the value. Just see the direction of this delta y, it's positive. Now let's scroll it up. Come on, don't embarrass me. Yeah. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I really don't know why. Maybe I'll see it later. Anyways, if you scroll up, you see the delta y is negative. If you scroll down, the delta y is positive. And that we can now use to differentiate it between a scroll up and a scroll down. So what we will do is set something like if E, what was the key of it? Was it delta y? Was it delta y? So if E dot delta y is more than zero, this would show it as down else it's a up scroll if it's a down scroll it means we have to scroll to the right meaning we have to drag our carousel to the left and we have to do the opposite in here so let's do that so how do we drag our carousel to the right hand side earlier we had a drag uh, dragging enabled that would help us right how do we do it now? Well, what if create a custom animation? Hmm, we can do that, I think. So we have the keyboard scrolling here and we need to be shifting it every time it happens. Okay, let's create another state here. We call it um, keyboard scroll animation call it a use animation copy this set the animation here animate is a property again from frame uh, from frame emotion that allows you to have control over the animation of the element itself this time we have to uh, manually control the dragging earlier drag was doing it for us on the mobile screen but now we need to take control of it ourselves because we want this animation to fire only when some specific events are happening in this case when mouse is moving either down or up now we have this animation set this here and if it goes down let's say a start animation and let's say small variant what are variants for variants just describe what is the final state that you want to animate your element to. So I want to, uh, so I'm scrolling down here, which means I want the X to be negative so that I can scroll to the positive, which means the right hand side. So let's try it. I'll say X as say, on every scroll, I want maybe 50 pixels. Okay, that works. And on every up event, say I want a negative 50. No, wait this one is supposed to be negative this one is positive and is this an asynchronous function yeah so i think i should await but now say someone's scrolling and we are going to be adding some smoothening to the animation so say someone changes the scroll direction before the previous scroll animation got over we need to stop that and then go ahead with whatever we're doing right now isn't it so before even we start the new the updated animation let's take 
uh, days and stop whatever is happening currently. So we stop the animation if it's happening, if not, nothing changes and then we animate to whatever the new position is. Save it. Let's try. Let's reload and shift and down. It does, but it's very unstable. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it also, because this is fixed, uh, it won't animate our X past 50, it will only animate it to 50. Huh, this is not something I thought of. But, mm, hmm, so I was thinking for a while and we need a way for us to increment this X. And that's my alarm. Anyways, ah, so we need to be increasing the value of x progressively. How do we do that? But what if we store the amount that we scrolled and then use it? I mean, what if we do something like const scrolled with set scrolls with is a simple use state. Uh, it's, it's not a boolean. I'm sorry, it's a number. Initially zero because we have scrolled none of it. And then it said scrolled with. Let's add scrolled with here. And then step one would be adding the scroll with so that we don't get an absolute 50 but 50 more than what was originally scrolled by and then let's also decrease set scroll width by prev scroll width would now be prev scroll width minus 50 right because Hmm. Is this even correct? Let's think about it. We want the scroll width to be increasing when we click on down. So we want this to be happening. A negative here because scroll is decreasing on scroll up because we are returning back to the position. And if we do this, this should work. Think and let's do this before, and let's do this before we do that, and then let's go ahead for the animation. Let's uh, okay, let's not wait for that, and let's save and Let's remove this line uh, because someone might be scrolling in the same direction twice in that case it would stop that one too resulting in a very sloppy scrolling experience. We don't want that. Save and now refresh. Will this work? Hmm. It does but 50 is way too less isn't it? Let's increase this. Let's increase this a, a, a bit more. Uh, how do we increase? I mean, should we keep it a uh, hundred? Let's keep it a hundred. Let's try it with a hundred. There's one other thing to do to smooth in this, but right now I'm just figuring out, uh, figuring out the distance. Holy sh... Uh, nope. What is this? On the shift up, it moves to a completely wrong direction. Is it or isn't it? Uh, wait a minute. All right. Ah, so it's been a really long video. So this negative, I missed this one. This negative has to be there, isn't it? Because if we are scrolling it up, we are subtracting from our width, right? So if we are adding a hundred to the original width, it was this before I paused the video and went ahead to debug it. So. Uh, this wouldn't work because you were adding 100 
to already the width that has been scrolled, meaning you're doing the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. Add a negative here, which would then counteract the 100, meaning you would come backwards instead of going all the way forwards. Save it and let's try it. So if we scroll down, down with the mouse wheel, yeah, that works. We need to change the values. I mean, that 100 doesn't work. I think 200 would be enough. Uh, we'll see that later. But if we scroll up, that works. But here's another problem. It goes out of the bounds. Let's fix that. Uh, it goes out of the bounds because now frame of motion is no longer handling the drag. We are doing it ourselves. We have to be smart about that. So how do we know when to stop? Well, uh, say when it's up, let's fix the up first. So when do we want this to happen? Let's say there's an if condition and only when the if condition is satisfied should it uh, backtrack. When do we want to backtrack? Well, when the scroll width is more than zero, it should backtrack. If it is already zero, it shouldn't backtrack, right? So we'll do that. If the scroll width is more than zero, only then it should backtrack. Otherwise, it shouldn't backtrack because that would mean it would become uh, less than zero and therefore we would be scrolling uh, away from it, which we don't want. So reload. Did, did we save? No, we didn't. Let's save now. Refresh. And if we scroll down, works. But if we scroll up, it doesn't. I'm scrolling. You can't see my mouse here, but I'm, I am scrolling, but it doesn't scroll up. Perfect. Awesome. And let's do something similar for here. So we have the lower limit zero. What is the upper limit? What, what, don't we have the upper limit as well? I mean, we had it, right? In here. When we were calculating the distance that we are supposed to move this carousel width, we have the carousel width, but we were also subtracting something from that carousel width, wasn't it? This one? So we will be needing that here as well. So let's do another condition here. So under what condition will we al allow a scroll forward? Well, only if the scroll width is less than the total width that it is supposed to be scrolling. So we have the carousel scroll width. Uh, yeah, carousel scroll width. And will this work? Or do I need to subtract it? Because if you scroll all the way, okay, let's try it out. If you scroll all the way, I think let's try it out. Scroll with right. Scroll, scroll. Let's drag, drag, come on. I think we need to subtract. Yeah, I was right. We have to subtract from this uh, the value of the uh, width of the parent container of the carousel container, which in this case we figured it out to be this. Let's try it out. It's getting darker. If you see the video, if you rewind, you'd see uh, my face was lit much better. It's getting cloudy outside. Might rain soon. Hmm. Anyways, we have the carousel container ref. Let's also set this here. And this can come zero. So far, so we do this. Will this work? Let's try it out. Let's save. If I shift down, these errors, by the way, are not errors in my code. It's trying to fetch something. Hmm. I think it's one of my extensions that's trying to fetch something because it's nothing related to my code. So yeah, anyways, shifting it down. Should stop. And it stops just a little short of this distance. Why do we have this distance right here? Let's try it again. Hmm. That is so weird. Why is this happening? Hmm. So I was doing some brainstorming since, I mean, I, I took a, a little break. And I think I know what the problem is for this extra distance in the end. We are sliding in the uh, multiples of 100, isn't it? 
but our parent container did not always be a multiple of 100, right? So, if we scroll past the container, it would still allow the scrolling because we are scrolling in the increments of hundreds. Even for the last scroll where it should have stopped scrolling, we are still scrolling ahead and that's because this condition still gets satisfied, right? So, this condition gets satisfied even when we have scrolled to say here and then it was only supposed to allow me to scroll to here but since I set it to a hundred, this is not allowing me to scroll even further because it's only looking to make it in increments of 100, right? So there is no control over it. So let's have a condition like, uh, say, max possible scroll. So what is the maximum amount that I can currently scroll? I was comparing to this one, right? So this is, in fact, the maximum amount that I can scroll. So let's isolate it first. This is the amount that I can scroll. So uh, if it is less than scroll, it should allow me to scroll, but this 100 would be different. We say uh, max possible scroll. Uh, no, let's rename this to max possible scroll. Let's call it total possible scroll and let's call this one max possible scroll to be uh, the minimum and now there's a minimum condition because there's two possibilities that can happen either we can scroll scroll it a hundred if the total possible scroll is way more than hundred so 208 if total possible scroll was 208 you can scroll for the first time a hundred, next time even a hundred, but the next time you cannot scroll a hundred. You have to scroll an eight. You cannot go past that. So we are going to be comparing that. So whatever is the minimum between hundred and total possible scroll should be the amount that we can scroll. So max possible scroll is the amount we have and then we take it and fit it here. This should solve our problem, I think. Let's save it and find out. If we scroll, come on. Don't disappoint me. Ah, no. It doesn't. Hmm. I thought it was because of this, but it looks like it's not. Turned out I was doing something just a bit wrong. So many variables right now. Uh, and I'm doing this in one recording session. So yeah, you can tell it. But yeah, basically what you need to do is the max possible scroll is in the minimum of 100 and total possible scroll because total possible scroll is a constant, right? It's the total possible scroll. You need to be subtracting the scroll width from the total possible scroll to find out the amount that you can scroll. The amount that is left to be scrolled. We need to be finding the minimum with that and not the total possible scroll but the amount that is remaining to be scrolled. If we do that, now it currently works. I was just testing it. It comes all the way to the boundary. So that works. But now we need to implement this here as well. So let's quickly do that. So the max possible scroll, we are setting this here. And yeah, that works. Let's do something similar over here as well. Let's take the total possible scroll here as well. And the total possible scroll is the same, isn't it? So let's just not, let's define it outside. We have the total possible scroll here, the max possible scroll. Uh, so what is the max possible scroll in the right now? Let's figure this out. So we are subtracting 100, but what if subtracting 100 leads to an over scroll in the left direction? That can happen, so we need to prevent that. And how do we do that? Well, we need to find out what is the minimum between 100 and the amount that is remaining to be scrolled. In this case, we need to find out if after scrolling, we scroll more than a hundred. 
if we delete this one scroll width uh, tells us what is the amount that has been scrolled thus far from the beginning if we find out the minimum between 100 and the scrolled width then in case say if only we have 50 pixels that can be scrolled to the left we would be scrolling exactly those 50 pixels but if it was say 150 we would be first scrolling those 100 first meaning that 50 would be remaining and in the next iteration we would be scrolling 50 that would complete the scrolling and scrolling is complicated seriously i mean you see it right now let's fit the max possible scroll to all of these and i hope that would work let's try I need to separate these into their own hooks. This is getting way too complicated, but let's try scrolling. It should be scrolling all the way to the end. We do. And now if we scroll all the way to the front, we should without over scroll and that we do as well. Uh, let's check it out. Let's do some random here and perfect. That is awesome. Now let's smoothen the animation a bit. If you observe our phone, screens animations animation is quite smooth but here it's quite jagged right if i press uh, shift and drag it's quite jagged and the uh, and the reason is because we haven't set any transition here we just set the final state here let's set some transition to make this even better so what we need to do is say here every element can also have its own transition in frame of motion. Transition determines the way in which animation is resolved, meaning the easing, the timing, the delay, whatever, they all come under transitions. We'll be doing that transition is a very uh, simple object. So you'll be seeing that. So we have, uh, let's add some mass. By the way, this is where you would find the documentation for the transition. So right, uh, is it, Framer motion. Um, I think it's called spring options. Is it spring? Let's let's just Google for framer motion spring. We have transition, yeah. And let's go to spring. And these are the values that you would have: duration, bounce, damping. We would be using damping and mass for this. But uh, so, what is mass? Well, imagine a spring, right? It's springing. Now, if the mass increases, what happens? If the mass increases, it means that the uh, the motion or whatever you call it, uh, the periodic motion of the spring will be decreasing in, in, in frequency, is it not? Because the more this becomes heavier, the, uh, the, the slower it becomes and the lighter this becomes, the more faster this becomes. So, uh, if the mass is, I mean, we have to make this slower. So what if we increase the mass? By default, you see the mass is 1. What if we increase that to 2? Could work. But now there would be another problem. Okay, let me demonstrate what would be the problem. If you set the mass to 2 and go to reload. And say if we now scroll. You see how rapidly it stops? I mean, while it animates, it's smooth. But it stops abruptly. What if we can dampen that? What if we can... Uh, make sure it doesn't stop all of a sudden, but dampens on its way to there. There is another uh, value you can pass for, I think it's called damping. Yeah, for damping. It is the strength of the opposing force. Meaning, when you have a motion, what is the strength used to oppose that, to stop that? We need to be stopping this gradually and not all of a sudden. The current damping is set to 10. So, let's experiment with it. Frame of motion is as complicated as it's amazing, seriously. Let's set it to 100, save it, and let's try. Is this enough? Let's make it 200. Would it be too slow? I'm just playing around at this point. Hmm. Looks cool enough. Yeah, this looks cool enough. Or do you want to... Let's increase the mass a bit. Let's make this 300. What happens then? Let's see. It's becoming smoother. 
But what if we increase the damn pin to say 3000? I'm just playing around at this point. Does the damping have any effect at all on this? Else the spring will oscillate indefinitely. Yeah, but it should have an effect. Should have an effect. Um, hmm. Let's make the damping less than the default, which means it gets dampened less, meaning we have a few of those oscillations. What happens then? Does damping have any effect on the transition in the first place? Or do we need to control the transitions manually? No, it does have an effect. See, it does have an effect. Uh, so the mass is free, but damping doesn't work in this case. Okay, we need to smoothen this out. We can try with mouse. Or, what is the stiffness? Higher values will create a more sudden movement. This is what we want, stiffness, set to 100. So the higher means more sudden. We want less sudden. So let's make it 50. It's 100 by default. Hmm. Lots of values you can play with. Isn't this smoother, by the way? Oh, 10. Let's make it 10. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at this. Uh, it still stops abruptly. Hmm. I wonder if we can provide our own easing for that uh, instead of this what if hmm I'm just thinking of the possibilities at this time we have a transition here don't we what if we set the ease to be uh, an ease on its way out what if we do that and what if we take away this transition? What happens then? I'm just playing at this point. Yeah, it's even worse. It's even worse than that. Uh, nope, that wouldn't work. But what if... Then I just want a little smooth on the animation. How do we do that? Hmm. We have the stiffness, the mass. This video I realized is getting way too big. I thought it would be a 30 minutes video. Now I can see it's. God damn it. We have a spring, we have a bounce, and. Hmm. Duration. And bounce. And damping. What if we set the damping to zero? That's true. Damping has zero effect upon this. I think we can have to control this with mass itself. There is no damping. I think so. But even mass has no effect on this. What the hell? Let's try with a mass of 50. Slowing down. A 500. Man, are these values not linear? I see no change at all. Come on. Well, I just figured out we could use the duration for this. No need to handle that uh, stuff ourselves with the mass and the damping. It would work with the mass and the damping and stiffness. But we can use duration to simplify it for us. So say, for example, we don't want the, our animation to extend beyond 500 milliseconds. What if we set it to that? Instead of handling all of those physics by ourselves, we let frame of motion handle it for us. Meaning we only supply the duration. This is what I wanted. A very smooth scroll. Yeah, this works. Maybe a little... Uh, yeah, 0 0.5 is all right. So we have the transition. And the second part of this 
uh, I mean the second stage is complete the accessibility works and now for the last portion of it which is uh, creating a custom scroll bar that appears on desktop screens that we can use to scroll this and this has been one long tutorial you know what I'm gonna do be before I start I'm gonna create custom hooks because this is uh, this looks heinous use mobile scroll dot yes uh, I'm gonna take a pause right here okay okay so I finished uh, putting them uh, putting these functionalities inside their own custom hooks so we have one for the mobile scroll one for the keyboard scroll we have them we import them here and take out their values destructure them and then put them uh, put them as it was so now it's looking quite clean now for the final stage for let's say custom scroll bar let's create a custom hook for that as well so use custom scroll dot ts I'm gonna be exporting cost use custom scroll but before we make the hook and export our stuff let's create the custom scroll here somewhere here let's do that first before we uh, go ahead with the hook so this is our motion element we want our custom scroll bar to here let's write comments for this actual carousel and in here would be the custom scroll bar okay now we need to ensure the bar takes up the full width of this so let's do that uh, Let's create a small div and let's have another div inside it and now this is what should we name it let's call it carousel uh, scroll bar yeah let's call it carousel scroll bar uh, and this one let's call it carousel scroll bar bar uh, that's cool let's go for a little bit of css let's style this first before we do anything else so we have the carousel we have the carousel container and then we have the carousel scroll bar which is here carousel scroll bar bar ready for style okay. the carousel scroll bar let's set its position to relative width as 100% so the position is to relative so now we have the full width and about the height let's set the height of this one okay now let's set the width uh, the height of this is hmm let's say do we absolutely code it or do we let's make it one ram is too much let's make it eight pixels or 0 0.5 ram at 100 percent zoom with default 16 pixels of body font size so we have the height here and let's also make the width of it mm, the width let's say 10 ram that means 160 pixels way too much i think uh eight ram let's go with eight ram so we have the width of this let's also set a background color um so it's uh, so we can differentiate it easily let's set uh let's manipulate it ourselves let's set a very grayish color right now do we want a grayish color yeah maybe like that yeah let's make it capsule shapes and let's say the cursor is a pointer and let's say when it is clicked let's turn this rather into a button that's much better and when it's clicked meaning when it's active we need the background color to change slightly to reflect that we clicked it so it becomes say a bit darker come on yeah that's cool and we have the cursor as pointer we have the button 
Mm -hmm. Let's set some accessibility stuff. Area label. Uh, let's call it school bar and area row. Is it area row? Let me just quickly Google it. Area row scroll. Scroll by the graphical object is a range with a description area scroll bar. You can use the. Uh, 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 I'm gonna have to. Yeah, this is what I want. Add the scroll bar element. I love my scroll bar. Hmm. The role is scroll bar. So let's do that. Well, the viewport. Uh, via the ID whose contents are controlled by the school bar. Huh? There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done correctly. Man, I'm gonna come here later. There is way too much accessibility on this. Uh, hmm. I didn't. Wow, there's a lot of it. Uh, ah, I'm sorry. I'm on a video. What am I doing? Why am I hacking into this? I'm gonna come to the area later. Let's continue with this. We ha we have a button inside a carousel scroll bar that takes a full width. The button looks like this. If we save it, should be seeing a scroll bar. Yeah, looks ugly because we never styled our. Uh, let's have some basic style. Or not, let's just do it here. So we need to reset uh, the default stylings of buttons that browsers apply. Generally, you do them with a common style. Okay, we have the base dot style, so let's manipulate it here. So we, let's call it a button. Let's do away with, uh, let's call it a display as block. Let's do away with the outline as none. Let's do away with the border as none. And this should work. Yeah. Perfect. Of course, dragging this won't work because we haven't to use any drag controls over here, which we will do now, by the way. So we have the drag there. Let's increase the size. Let's call it uh, a 75 RAM. Way too much. <laughs> okay, five school. Okay, now let's focus on something called the drag controls. What drag controls allow you to do is that it allows you to uh, basically drag another component from dragging another component. What I mean by that is that in comparison to the uh, mobile uh, dragging where you drag the very element that is needed to be dragged on the desktop scrolling it's not so. You would be dragging the scroll bar but this drag would produce a drag on the carousel as well. So we need to transfer that drag. Drag controls, I find, will do that. So it says, so let's do that. Uh, so let's have a read into, uh, let's have, let's see what they want us to do. We use the drag controls. Okay, let's do that. We have a start drag functionality. Let's copy this. By the way, this is inside gestures in the documentation. Scroll all the way to drag, keep scrolling down, and you will find the drag controls over there. So they use drag controls from frame and motion. And let's call it scroll bar drag controls. Start scroll bar drag it's a simple function that takes an event and the event uh, is on the pointer down got it so what if we uh, it needs to be done on the bar right the drag controls have to be on the bar and this has to be on the entire got it so let's say on pointer down the simple even did they do it on pointer down yeah on pointer down and uh, the event is a react point yeah pointer even handler so 
pointer event from React uh, it, on HTML div element. Let's further specify it. Implement div element. We have the event. Let's just call it an E. Snap to cursor. Perfect. We are starting a drag on this. Okay. Now let's call these. Use custom scroll. Let's call it use custom scroll bar. Let's rename to a bar. Apply. And use custom scroll bar. Yeah, correct. We're getting we're getting a few things right over here. We need the scroll bar drag controls as well as the scroll bar start scroll bar drag and then let's destructure them now the drag controls needs to be uh, this would start the dragging and there's the drag controls here controls uh, yeah this has to be a motion dot button yeah drag controls would be a scroll bar drag control and we need constraints for this don't we because we can then drag all the way to and that's not what we want let's try it out okay save and we should be able to drag it now and there is absolutely no dragging what the hmm Turns out I was an idiot again. We didn't set the drag X here, right? Remember how we set the drag to X to enable the dragging? I just set the drag controls. I never set uh, set the drag X. I did that. Now it works. If we refresh, you see that the scroll bar moves. Of course, the carousel wouldn't because we haven't hooked it up. But see, it moves. One problem: it goes ahead of the boundary. But now we know how to fix that using drag constraints. Remember? So we would be doing the same thing here as well. The drag constraints would be if we drag it to the left it should not go anymore if we drag it to the right it should go to uh it's also scroll width yeah that's the one hmm. but we need to subtract from it something and that something is the width of the scroll bar that we have but our width is dynamic uh should we make it constant or not uh it has to be pixels hmm let's make it 64 pixels it's hard code this value there are sacrifices to be made but also scroll width is the one on the right and yeah let's do that okay let's try scroll and we scroll why are we able to scroll this yeah we can't scroll it beyond the zero but this still allows us to okay let's make this uh we had set this to 8 rem 8 into 16 what is 8 into 16 128 pixels we make this 128 pixels and now we need to ensure that we don't uh, drag uh, more than what we can so i mean that bouncy nature we have to decrease that how do we do that why don't we use the same transition or better yet hmm let's just use it as it is let's see how it is save it and this should go all the way oh man that's way too s smooth we don't want that now do we uh is that a drag transition perfect let's hack into this uh we need uh hmm we need more damping right let's make it a hundred so it dampens faster let's try it again 
yeah 100 is way too much i think let's do it with 50 how about that yeah it's quite cool okay and if we scroll beyond what happens we shouldn't be able to scroll right but it seems that we can ah, because the right didn't come as correct let's fix that I think we can be smart about this and not do the drag constraints like it. Let me show you there is another form of the drag constraint. So you can either, either pass an object like we discussed here or you can be smart and pass it a reference to the parent container that is supposed to contain the dragging. Meaning we cannot drag this beyond the boundaries of this container, isn't it? So what if we make a reference to this? Let's say... Scroll bar container scroll bar container ref. Let's make a use ref and this will point to an HTML div element or a no and let's return this. Let's destructure this out of this and now let's set the ref and then we can set the ref to here meaning that this will never go out of the bounds of the parent container which is the carousel scroll bar let's try it should work if we try to uh, and it doesn't for some weird reason doesn't it what about this side it does in his side as well. What the hell is happening with frame motion? Okay. Turns out it would have worked. What I didn't do was that after setting the reference to here, I didn't uh, turn this into a motion element. If you don't do that, this wouldn't be properly used internally, I suppose. And that's the only possible reason, I think. Man, I'm so tired. I've been recording for the past two or three hours probably my god anyways we are approaching the end almost so now we have the uh dragging set if you see this you cannot drag to the left hand side it would still snap back to zero and what if we do to the end you, you cannot cross that you will only stay within the boundaries now we need to somehow get the amount scrolled by the button and then accordingly start an animation that would work transi uh translate the carousel to the negative x direction on a forward scrolling similar to what we did for the mobile scrolling so let's do that okay after lots of brainstorming and figuring out man i'm tired as fuck uh so what we need to do is that this motion dot button that we are supposed to drag around we set the inline x of it as a motion value that we created ourselves using the hook use motion value exported from frame of motion. So from frame of motion, you create a motion value. Remember, motion values are special values, not just numbers, but very special values that encapsulates numbers or any measurable value. You take that motion value, pass it into here, set it as the x, and what would happen is that since it's set to drag equals x, whenever you drag it along, this value would automatically keep getting upgraded. Updated and why do we need that because when we drag this we need to have some way of knowing when this is being dragged So that once we drag it we can then accordingly drag this element with this carousel So now we know you see that I'm logging the amount of pixels that you scrolled right now This is getting logged. All right now And how do I do that use a simple use effect hook to uh, run an on change listener on the uh, motion value and then inside uh, the on change value, you can do whatever you want. Now, I am typecasting this as any because for some reason, TypeScript doesn't show this on change function on the drag motion value. So, I don't know why it's casted it as any and do it. So, now we have the value, right? So, we need to figure out first what is the fraction that uh, the scrolling was done because absolute pixels wouldn't help. Because from here to here might be a thousand fifty six pixels, but 
the actual width that can be scrolled is much more than that and in fact the actual scroll width is what we figured out as I think hmm, isn't it carousel scroll width so we take this one pass it here we take it this one pass it here now we have the uh, value that was scrolled so now let's divide it and see what happens we have both of these numbers say progress is this motion value this tutorial is probably one of my longest efforts and let's divide it and then let's log out this progress see what happens okay let's refresh and we have infinity why is that uh carousel scroll width all right we have to okay uh okay All right, uh, let's do some changes here. So this on change returns an unsubscribe method that you must call when you are unmounting. So we do that, return unsubscribe. And we don't and say, uh, this could also scroll width, if it is zero, then we replace that as let's say take this if this is equals to zero then we set it to a zero else whatever this is we have the progress let's log the progress okay let's see okay 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0.11 is that even correct? A 0 0.22. Hmm. Then another. So I think I figured it out. We don't need this cross scroll width. That is the entire. We don't want the entire. That is straightforward wrong. We need the scroll bar container refs width, not the entire, right? What the hell I was thinking? Uh dot current. And we have the current now. We have the client width or zero and this is the total uh, width that we have and then we can say this dot get divided by this is our value so uh, we can say something like if this exists then do it like so if the element pointed by it exists then do it like so we don't need a this in that case we wouldn't even need this else set it to zero how about that it is cool but exists uh, its progress is the actual value that we scrolled divided by the scroll bars actual uh, the actual scroll bars parents uh, width else it is zero this should work okay let's try let's try with progress come on yeah do it yeah I think this will work come on Come on. Okay, this doesn't go all the way. And that is probably because this value. Hmm, let me figure it out. So it turns out I had to add 128 to the scroll bar drag motions value. And I think it's obvious because if we don't add 128, we are only including the distance from here to here however if we scroll it all the way to the end we need the distance from here all the way to the end which is the distance that was scrolled given to us by this dot get plus 128 makes sense 
see uh, note on the right hand side if we scroll it all the way to the end we have it set as one if we scroll it on the way to the left we have it as 0 0.09 ah okay uh, and I think I figured it out so we don't need to subtract 128 from the scroll bar but rather from the parent containers width is it not because we have to assume that our scroll bar starts from here which is zero and it continues all the way to here which is 128 less than the width of the scroll bar so why change this when we can simply change uh, i mean subtract 128 from the client width of the scroll bar container because that is the maximum limit up to which we can scroll is it not from here all the way to this point right over here so i subtracted 128 and it works man scroll figuring out scroll is so tough anyways we have the progress ah finally now we have the progress now we need to find a way to fit that progress inside the translate x of this one right over here so uh i did a few changes uh Say we use a uspring value to initialize the carousel x value. This carousel x is supposed to be the amount of x translation that the carousel is to be moved if the scroll bar is moved. So this is the carousel x value. So what if we find the progress and then explicitly set that carousel value? It's a negative here because now because the direction has to be reversed for scrolling right, you translate left and so on. So uh, you set the value manually to carousel x and then you use the same carousel x as an, an inline style x to carousel x. Would this work? And the answer is yes it does because if you save it, now it does. See? Uh, we need to make this proper. I mean the transition has to be proper. But look at the functionality. It does work. But now we have this extra space again because remember in the very first section of the video we subtracted the uh, width of the screen, uh, the, uh, the parent container of the carousel from the uh, total to figure out how much carousel x we need to set, right? So we are going to be doing exactly that. So what if we take the scroll bar container ref and set a current dot the client width? What if we do that? Would this be proper? If we subtract this from here, now we have a reduced total distance to cover, meaning that there is lesser distance. Let's see if we are correct. If we scroll all the way to the end. And we are done! My god, I've been at it for three hours. Okay, I think the scrolling needs to be made a little bit proper at this instance, isn't it? Hmm. Is it? Or is it fine? Nah, it needs to be made proper. So let's quickly do that. We'll be using the very same transition, so let's not waste time behind it. We can probably set a spring options. We do. We set the mask to be a 2 under damping, let's say uh, 200. Let's say refresh and try again. Man, that is way too slow. Uh, or alternatively, we can just use the duration. Can we not? We did figure it out. We can set a duration of 0 0.5. So let's uh, try that. So, hmm. Let's make it 0 0.75. yeah so does it do much maybe a mass of a one wouldn't be as slow as that let's try uh let's try with a lower damping yeah the damping has to be more so let's try with the 50 damping how about that? How about too much, right? How about with a 30 damping? Let's try. 
yeah this is good this is proper and there you go you have your beautiful scroll bar all customized and ready for white screens as well as for mobile screens huh there is one problem you see if you scroll this one this one doesn't change hmm But we don't need this one because in mobile screens you don't find a scroll bar like this. So what if we just hide it with CSS? I mean, you get the point, right? Uh, you can simply hide this one with... It's dark, isn't it? Can you even see my face? What the hell? I've been programming. What? Whoa, 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 wait. I completely forgot it has gone that dark and you couldn't even... Man, how did you even see my face? Yeah, it, now it looks proper. What? <laughs> All right, anyway, so now there you go. You have your own carousel that is animated, is keyboard accessible, and uh, also you have your own slider that can also do the very same. The slider, of course, doesn't update when you move uh, or scroll through the carousel manually on your own. And that is kind of to be expected because we didn't bind them together but then you wouldn't probably have this slider on a mobile screen you just use CSS a simple media query to just hide it I'm not hiding it here because this video has already gone way too much long but yeah there you go you have your own beautiful slider isn't that amazing in the next part of the video we'll be exploring how to do page transitions and I think that would be a long video as well I'm gonna take some rest and I hope that you learned from it you and um, sorry if i fumbled around way too much i mean that's just me and i'll see you in the next tutorial follow me on twitter shoot me a message there if you have if you face any problems uh or leave a comment down below or follow me on twitter you can also shoot me a message directly on twitter my username would be appearing somewhere on the screen so give me a follow and i'll see you guys very soon in the next video i'm gonna go rest you have a great day ahead bye